hath ascended up into heaven, or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. About a year ago, I started the Holy Angel series. I had a lot of content on the fallen angels. However, the role and the existence of the holy angels are not highlighted in the awakening nor in religion. Despite the holy angels serving a great purpose in our daily lives, most people reduce the holy angels to just messengers. Although the Most High places angels over his creation, most people have no idea of the many roles the holy angels have. There's a hierarchy in the angelic world. The angels are not just messengers. The Satans have great kingdoms in this world. How could Satan say to the Messiah, all the kingdoms of this world I will give to you if you will bow down and worship me, if he's just a messenger? Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. A lot of people forget that the character named Satan in the scriptures is a high-ranking angel. This angel have deceived himself and many other angels to rebel against the Most High. The angels are worshipped as gods to the pagans. The pagans are not the only people who worship the angels. Some Israelites worship angels unawares. Every idol that is worshipped in the beast culture are fallen angels. A lot of people worship demons as gods. Israelites, if the angels are just messengers, what message does the Satans and the rest of the fallen angels have for us? The holy angels have significant roles in the creation of the Most High as well as in our daily lives. That is why the Most High made sure to say in his commandment not to create any graven images of the angels or anything in the heavens to worship. The indigenous black people are quick to worship and transform a created creature into a god. That is why the sin of idolatry runs rampant in the Israelite community. The Most High made it very clear to worship and serve him only. In addition, the Most High said, we must worship and serve him in the spirit and in truth. The Most High said he would not share his glory with anyone. Israelites, listen to the word of the Most High and flee from idolatry. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Not only does the Satans have great kingdoms, Satan also have angels that he rule over. The book of Revelation confirmed this to be true when Michael and his angels fought against Satan and his angels. In the book of Matthew in the New Testament, the Messiah said to the people, Depart from me, all who are cursed, prepare for the devil and his angels. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. The book of Revelation and the book of Matthew revealed that Satan ruled over other angels. If the angels are just messengers, how come Satan have kingdoms and angels he ruled over? Before Lucifer deceived himself, he was and still is a high-ranking angel. Just because Lucifer and the rest of the fallen angels rebel against the Most High, they never stop being angels. The same goes for us. If we rebel against the Most High, our Creator, we will not stop being humans made in the image of the Most High. Being a messenger is one of the many roles the angels have. If Satan, being evil and rebellious, have kingdoms and angels he ruled over, this would indicate that there are holy angels who rule over kingdoms or nations as well. In addition, rule over other angels. The holy angels are present and they are ascending and descending upon the earth until this day. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. 
and behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. A lot of Israelites in the awakening did not know the holy angel Michael is the prince over Israel, despite the scriptures in the Bible revealing this information to them. Majority of Israelites' focus in the awakening, as well as in religion, is on Jesus. Most Israelites are repeating and following the doctrines of Rome. The Messiah the Prince videos revealed to me that many Israelites seek the heathens for confirmation instead of seeking the face of the Most High the Father for all of their needs. Not even the Most High the Father is as famous in worship like the Son God, Jesus, and Yahshua. Yeshua is the holy angel Michael before he became the son of man in the flesh. That is how he could say to the people when he walked this earth before Abraham, I am. He existed long before Abraham was born into this world. In addition, the scripture said Abraham longed to see the Messiah and he saw the Messiah and rejoiced. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Our father Abraham did see the Messiah when the Most High the Father stopped him from offering Isaac. The lamb in the bush that was used as an offering to save Isaac was how the Most High showed Abraham what would happen to the Messiah. The scriptures in the Bible left out the purpose unto why the Most High asked Abraham to offer Isaac and the meaning behind the lamb in the bush. The Bible is missing a lot of information. The same place Abraham offered Isaac to the Most High is the same place the Messiah was also crucified. To those of you who don't reject knowledge by not rejecting books that were removed and deemed unscriptural, the book of Adam and Eve confirmed the scriptures in the book of John. Yet God redeemed Isaac with a lamb that was tied to a bush. And the bush to which the lamb was tied is the very place where the tree of the cross was planted. And the lamb that saved Isaac from death was a figure of the lamb of God who saved us all from death. By the way, no one has the authority to say what is scriptural and what is not scriptural. If the Most High speaks to me in a dream or a vision, is it not the word of the Most High? The father said he speaks to us in a dream. Praying is having a conversation with the Most High. When the Most High answer my prayers and your prayers, is it not the word of the Most High? 99% of the scriptures are dreams and visions. No one has the authority to say what is scriptural and what is not. The scripture said the lamb Abraham saw had the figure of the Messiah. King David saw the Messiah as well when he saw the angel of the Lord with a sword standing between the earth and the heavens. Here goes that popular word, standing, that we see whenever Michael is about to execute the wrath of the Most High. The scriptures in the book of Chronicles reveal the Most High sent an angel to destroy Jerusalem when King David sinned by numbering the people when Satan influenced him. In verse 15 in chapter 21, in the book of 1 Chronicles said, the Most High sent an angel. Israelites, keep that in mind. In verse 16, King David saw the angel, the scripture said the Most High sent. Verse 16 referred to the angel as the angel of the Lord, standing with a sword. And God sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying, the Lord beheld and he repented him of the evil, and said to the angel that destroyed, It is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. And David lifted up his eyes, and saw the angel of the Lord stand between the earth and the heaven, having a drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders of Israel, who were clothed in sackcloth, fell upon their faces. If you don't know by now, the angel of the Lord is the holy angel Michael. Later, I will show you the scriptures. The book of Adam and Eve also confirms the scriptures in the book of Chronicles that King David saw the angel with the sword. The book of Adam and Eve gave us the information the Bible left out. The place King David saw the angel of the Lord was the very place Abraham saw the Messiah. 
that mountain also on which King David saw an angel standing with a sharp sword of fire as if going to smite Jerusalem with it is the place where Abraham saw with the eyes of the Holy Spirit, the Son of God hanging on it. For this reason did the Lord say to the Jews, Abraham, your father, rejoiced and longed to see my day, and he did see it and was glad. Israelites, it's important to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you to knowledge that will transform your life. The only way to renew your mind is by letting the Most High transform you. When you reject knowledge, you perish. The scripture said, through knowledge will the just be delivered. A lot of Israelites enjoy being held hostage in the house of bondage, the church, whose roots is in the beast religion. An hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. The place where Isaac and the Messiah was offered for a sacrifice, that is the same place where the body of Adam was buried, the middle of the earth. I've talked about the middle of the earth in the tales of Adam and Eve, part three. From the middle of the earth is where the Messiah will come. Wherever the middle of the earth is plays a significant role in our salvation. The hidden meaning to Jerusalem is the middle of the earth. There's a lot of prophecy concerning the middle of the earth. That is why the Most High chose the city Jerusalem to put his name there. Israelites, it's important to know where the middle of the earth is. They all took pleasure in the work, brought together materials in abundance, and built the city of Jerusalem, that means the middle of the earth. The book of Enoch said the angels corrupt mankind and everything in this earth. The fallen angels even have children. That is how the fallen angels taught their sons all the abomination mankind knows today. The book of Enoch went as far as to reveal what each angel taught mankind. When the time comes for the Most High to redeem his creation, he has to cleanse the earth from all the abominations the fallen angels taught mankind. The downfall to the seed of Adam and Eve is that they learn all the secrets of the angels. And on the day of the great judgment, he shall be cast into the fire and heal the earth which the angels have corrupted and proclaim the healing of the earth that they may heal the plague and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. And a command has gone forth from the presence of the Lord concerning those who dwell on the earth that their ruin is accomplished because they have learned all the secrets of the angels and all the violence of the Satans and all their powers, the most secret ones and all the power of those who practice sorcery and the power of witchcraft and the power of those who make molten images for the whole earth. When I speak about the angels and reveal to you the role they play in the good versus evil that has been happening from the beginning, a lot of people are in denial. The beast religion purposely don't teach you anything significant. Religion teach the people how to become idolaters and how to rebel against the most high. Religion is not meant to draw you closer to the father, but to cause a separation between you and the most high. Because religion is witchcraft and idolatry, Nothing they teach you is of the most high. Religion is nothing but lies. The fact that some Israelites in the awakening continue to be deceived by religious doctrines reveal a lot of Israelites are not interested in the father. If Israelites were truly serving the father, they would find him when they look for him with all of their hearts. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Most Israelites are seeking the heathens and passing down the doctrines of the heathens to their children. The Most High charged his people, the Israelites, to teach your children his statutes, commandments, and laws. Why are you transferring doctrines of devils from religion to your children? This is the reason the indigenous black people perish for a lack of knowledge. They keep rejecting knowledge that is being revealed to them in the form of truth. In the last days, your knowledge is supposed to increase, not decrease. Don't let the doctrines of devils taught to you by religion keep you stagnant. The truth of the Most High's words will not give you confirmation to the doctrines of devils taught to you by the workers of iniquity in religion. You have to ask the Father for the spirit of discernment. The Holy Spirit have to be with you to guide you into all truth. Without the Holy Spirit, the truth is hidden from you. When the Holy Spirit begins to open your eyes, 
you will begin to see what is hiding in plain sight. Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The truth is supposed to make you uncomfortable. The truth is not meant to correspond with the ways of this world. The truth is meant to make you free from the spiritual bondage religion have put you in. The truth is supposed to guide you unto the narrow road that leads to life. The truth is supposed to sanctify you by the word of the Most High. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. If Israelites were truly about their father's business, you would have nothing in common with the beast culture and the beast religion. Your spiritual journey would not imitate the religious path. The more time I spend in the presence of the Most High, the more disconnected I become to the beast system and religion. By now, all of you should know that the word of the Most High have been tampered with. The Bible is altered. Some Israelites believe only the New Testament is altered. The Old Testament is altered as well. If you find the word Lord, God, Jew, and many other titles that don't identify the people in the Old Testament, an alteration has taken place. Not only did the heathens alter the word, they remove important scriptures that could confirm truth that many of you are seeking. The mother harlot, the Roman Catholic Church, have all of our books and scriptures hidden. It's up to you, Israelites, to allow the Most High to lead you into truth via his spirit. Israelites, there's a lot of knowledge that is hiding in plain sight. The only way you and I can find the truth, you have to walk in the spirit. This I say then. Walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walking in the spirit is when you let the Holy Spirit guide you. You don't rely on anything but the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The steps of the righteous are ordered by the Most High. If you serve the Most High and not the idols of the heathens, then your every move are ordered by the Most High. If you can't determine who's ordering your steps, you need to spend more time in the presence of the Most High to discern His voice. All who belong to the Most High know His voice. A stranger's voice His people will not follow. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, that they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Israelites, don't rely on the wisdom of this world to increase your understanding as well as getting to know the Most High. The Holy Spirit will lead you to knowledge that will increase your understanding. When you walk in the Spirit, many will not understand you unless the Most High open their eyes. That is why so many cannot comprehend the deep messages from this channel. Most people understand and operate in the flesh. The flesh doesn't comprehend spirit. When Israelites begin to understand this truth about the conflict between the flesh and spirit, the spirit of confusion could no longer deceive them. Remember, the Most High is not the author of confusion. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Israelites, there's a lot of information hiding right before your eyes. I've been telling you for a long time that there are two messiahs in the Bible. The reason there's two, the heathens altered the scriptures to insert themselves into the sacred text. Altering the scriptures is how the seed of the fallen are hiding their identity in the beast system. Besides the other species of mankind's identity crisis, you can find the answer to a lot of your questions in the scriptures. Only the Holy Spirit could show you the hidden answers in the sealed scriptures. The angel that was sent to give Daniel understanding of his dreams and visions said to Daniel, seal the scriptures until the end times. At the end, many will run to the scriptures and knowledge will increase. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Knowledge will increase when the Holy Spirit reveal the truth. The most effective way the Satans have concealed the identity of nations and bloodlines is by changing names multiple times. Black people born in the diaspora receive a name change in every generation. We were labeled African slaves for a period of time. From slaves, we became colored. 
Presently, we all have been grouped together under the black race. Bloodline doesn't exist in the beast system. Everyone are labeled by a color. The Holy Angel Michael have many names in the scriptures. The reason we never knew the scriptures was talking about Michael, the scriptures assign many titles to him instead of his given name. The Most High name all of his creatures. The Most High the Father have several titles for names in the scriptures as well. I've heard Jehovah, Yahweh, Jehovah Nisi, Lord, God, Most High, the Father, and many other titles that is supposed to identify the God of our fathers in the scriptures. Lucifer have many names in the Bible as well. He's one of the Satans, the dragon, the devil, the serpent, prince of the air, and the God of this world are a few names and titles the scriptures have assigned to the head adversary. And the great dragon was cast out, an old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The holy angel Michael is all over the scriptures. The reason you never made the connection, the workers of iniquity remove his name. Also, the identity of the people in the scriptures have been removed to conceal truth and to give the seed of the fallen inheritance. Religion destroy many when they replace names with titles in the scriptures. Israelites, as soon as the Holy Spirit unmasks the person behind a title, the scriptures begin to make sense. A title can be assigned to many people. That is how the Satans keep you confused. For example, the title Satan means adversary. We have multiple adversaries. That is why you hear me say the Satans. Each Satan have a name. If you're not aware of the multiple Satans, every time you read the title Satan, you will automatically believe the scriptures is referring to Lucifer. There are many Satans. Each Satan taught mankind all sorts of abomination. Just like when you read the title, the angel of the Lord, some people believe it's referring to the most high, the father. In reality, the angel of the Lord is Michael. The names and titles the workers of iniquity allow the holy angel Michael to have in the scriptures are the great prince, chief prince, archangel, and Michael. Then said he unto me, Be not Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. The other names and titles of the holy angel Michael that is unknown to many is the angel of the Lord, Yahshua, Deliverer, the Prince of Peace, Messiah, Jesus, the Word of God, Son of God, and the Angel of His Presence are a few names and titles. The Holy Angel Michael is the only angel that is given high prestige when he is introduced to us in the scriptures. The other chief angels that are next in line, like Gabriel, was never presented to us with a title by his name. When Gabriel appeared to Daniel to give Daniel understanding, the scriptures refer to him as a man. Everywhere Gabriel appeared to the Israelites, he was called Gabriel. When a fallen prince, the prince of Persia, stood in the way of Gabriel to prevent him from reaching Daniel, the scriptures introduced us to one of the titles the holy angel Michael had in the scriptures. The scriptures called him a chief prince. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Both Michael and Gabriel are archangels. However, Michael is the one that is given the title chief prince. None of the other angels that stand in the presence of the Most High have the title the great prince, commander-in-chief, and many other titles given to Michael. The other angels are called by their names. The word Ark means chief in Greek. Having the title Ark besides your name symbolizes a high level, powerful leader. The word Ark stems from words such as monarch. 
A monarchy is a sovereign head of state like a king, queen, or emperor. A monarch is a person who reigns over a kingdom or an empire. A minority is a form of government with a monarch at the head, similar to kingship. The scriptures reveal to us that the holy angel Michael is an archangel. Since Michael is an archangel, where is his kingdom? We know that he is the captain to the host of heaven. Who are the people he ruled over and where is his kingdom? The book of Daniel in the Bible said, Michael is the prince over Israel. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael your prince. Not only is Michael the prince over Israel, but he is also over all the righteous. I said to you earlier in the message that if the Satans have kingdoms and rule over other angels, there must be a holy angel that does the same for the kingdom of the Most High. The Messiah said in the scriptures that his kingdom is not of this world. If his kingdom was of this world, his people would fight to prevent him from being handed over to the workers of iniquity. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Israelites, the Messiah's kingdom is not of this world. The Messiah's kingdom is paradise. Paradise is another name for the Garden of Eden, our first home. If you have been following the Messiah, the Prince messages, you will know that Michael is the leader in paradise. The scriptures in the Bible said, when the end comes, the righteous will live in paradise where the Lamb of the Most High and the Father will be. The righteous will eat from the tree of life. The tree of life will be food and healing for the righteous. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. As you heard in the scriptures, the tree of life will be food and a healing for the righteous. All who will inherit the Messiah's kingdom will eat from the tree of life. Paradise is the Messiah's kingdom. That is why the Messiah said his kingdom is not of this world. The book of Enoch referred to the tree of life and many other trees in paradise as fragrant trees. When Enoch was exploring the Most High's creation, he took notice of the trees and their smell. He saw the garden of righteousness and the fragrant trees that are in paradise. The scriptures describe the fragrant trees and their smell. And after these fragrant orders, as I looked towards the north over the mountains, I saw seven mountains full of choice nard and fragrant trees and cinnamon and pepper. And thence I went over the summit of all these mountains, far towards the east of the earth, and passed above the Erythian Sea and went far from it and passed over the angel Zatil, and I came to the garden of righteousness. And from afar off I saw trees, more numerous than these trees, and two great trees there, very great, beautiful, and glorious, and magnificent, and the tree of knowledge, whose holy fruits they eat, and know great wisdom. That tree is in height like the fir, and its leaves are like those of the carob tree, and its fruits is like the clusters of the vine, very beautiful, and the fragrance of the tree penetrates afar. Then I said, how beautiful is the tree and how attractive is its look. Israelites, I wanted you to know that the tree of life and the other trees are also known as fragrant trees are located in paradise. The book of Enoch revealed Michael was the leader in the garden of righteousness. It was Michael that explained to Enoch about the fragrant trees. Then I said, 
how beautiful is this tree and fragrant and its leaves are fair and its blooms very delightful in appearance. Then answered Michael, one of the holy and honored angels who was with me and was their leader. As you can see, Israelites, the holy angel Michael have a kingdom, but his kingdom is not of this world, just like the Messiah's kingdom is not of this world. The holy angel Michael also have people he watches over, the righteous. Let the truth of the Most High's words continue to be unmasked. Israelites, the word ark means chief. The scriptures let us know that the archangel Michael is a chief angel. Israelites, do you see the importance of having the Holy Spirit reveal what is hiding in plain sight? The title archangel have hidden knowledge. If you accept the New Testament that was originally written in Greek, then you must accept the definition to the title ark, which means chief in Greek. By the way, angel means messenger. The title archangel means chief messenger. Israelites, this information may appear to be small, but reveal a lot to those seeking truth. The other angels that sit in the presence of the Most High wasn't given titles such as Commander-in-Chief, the Great Prince, the Archistratage, and Chief Prince. The scriptures only give such titles to the Holy Angel Michael. And I will give thee, Enoch, my intercessor, the Archistratage Michael, for the handwritings of thy fathers Adam, Seth, Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, and Jared, thy father. The Most High have many archangels. The book of Enoch reveals to us that the archangels are the angels that are above angels. The archangels are appointed over everything in the heavens and earth. They rejoice and sing at the footstool of the father. The archangels, when they see evil doing, they can make commandments and instructions. Keep in mind, Israelites, that the archangels can make commandments. And thence those men took me and bore me up unto the sixth heaven. And there I saw seven bands of angels, very bright and very glorious, and their faces shining more than the sun's shining and glistening. And there is no difference in their faces or behavior or manner of dress, and these make the orders, and learn the going of the stars, and the alteration of the moon, or revolution of the sun, and the good government of the world. And when they see evil doing, they make commandments and instructions, and sweet and loud singing, and all songs of praise. These are the archangels who are above angels. Measure all life in heaven and on earth, and the angels who are appointed over seasons and years, the angels who are over rivers and sea, and who are over the fruits of the earth, and the angels who are over every grass, giving food to all, to every living thing, and the angels who write all the souls of men and all their deeds, and their lives before the Lord's face. In their midst are six phoenixes, and six cherubim, and six six winged ones continually, with one voice singing one voice. And it is not possible to describe their singing, and they rejoice before the Lord at his footstool. And those two men lift me up thence unto the seventh heaven, and I saw there a very great light, and fiery troops of great archangels, and corporeal forces, and dominions, orders, and governments, cherubim, and seraphim, thrones and many eyed ones, nine regiments, the ionic stations of light, and I became afraid and began to tremble with great terror. And those men took me and led me after them and said to me, the reason I pointed out that the archangels can make commandments, the Most High gave Moses statutes and commandments for the Israelites to follow. I am sure the commandments the archangels wrote came from the Most High the Father. The scriptures in the book of Enoch confirm the archangels have the ability to make commandments when they see evil doings. The angel of the Lord that appears throughout the Old Testament is often mistaken for the Most High the Father by many. Israelites, the angel of the Lord is actually an angel. The angel of the Lord is not the Most High the Father. The book of Acts confirmed the angel of the Lord that spoke with Moses in the burning bush was an angel and not the Most High the Father. Religion said it was the Most High, the Father, that spoke with Moses in the burning bush, but it was actually an angel. 
the same angel that was sent to deliver the Israelites from Mizraim. This Moses whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send, to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. The book of Acts revealed the angel of the Lord that was in the burning bush was the angel sent to deliver the Israelites from Mizraim. The book of Exodus also confirmed this to be true when the Most High said he would send his angel before the Israelites. The Most High said, don't provoke him, my name is in him. It was also an angel that was with the Israelites in the pillar of clouds. Religion proclaimed via their doctrines, it was God the Father. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies, and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For mine angel shall go before thee, and bring thee in unto the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. The Most High deliver his people through his angels. The Most High the Father doesn't need to come off his throne to do anything. The angels are created beings. The Most High the Father is not a created being. The Most High don't need to transform into an angel to do his will on earth. The Most High, the Father, can be everywhere at the same time. There is no need for the Father to transform himself into one of his created creatures to interact with us. The Father is spirit. He can interact with you from anywhere. If the Most High manifests himself as an angel to his people, then he is not living up to his words. The Father is not a created being. The Father doesn't have a beginning. The Father always existed. There was never a time he didn't exist. I am self-eternal, not made with hands and without change. The Most High, the Father, doesn't change. He is the same today, yesterday, and forever and ever. If the Father transformed himself into an angel to interact with his people, then he is a God that changed. The Father made it very clear that he is self-eternal and without change. The Father used his angels, his messengers, to do his will on earth. That is the purpose of the angels. The angels are messengers and the Most High will appoint his angels to act on his behalf. Earlier I said to you, remember the title, an angel of the Lord, angel of God, and the angel of the Lord. The scriptures often use the title, the angel of the Lord, or an angel of the Lord, to conceal the identity of the character. Every creature the Most High created have a name. The book of Adam and Eve revealed the identity of the angel that was with our fathers from the beginning. This angel confirmed the Most High sent him to give Canaan, the grandson of Shem, commandments. Then the angel said to him, I am the angel whom God has sent unto thee to give thee this commandment and transgress not the command of God. When Canaan heard this word from the angel of God, he wondered and said unto him, Speak, O my Lord. And the angel of God said unto him, I am the angel who brought gold to thy father Adam when he was below the garden. I am the angel who prayed to God together with Adam when he offered his blood upon the altar. I am Michael, the angel who received the soul of Abel the just. I am the angel who was with Seth when he was born in the cave. I am the angel who was with Enos and Canaan and Mahalalel, and Jared, and Enoch, and Methuselah, and Lamech, and with Noah. Yet since he entered into rest, I stand by his firstborn son, Shem. In previous chapters in the book of Adam and Eve, the scriptures never identified the angel that was with our fathers. The scriptures always said the word of God came to one of our fathers to reveal what the Most High sent him to say. 
The heathens forgot to remove the section that identified Michael as the angel with our fathers. The workers of iniquity figure we wouldn't look into these books once they discredit and slander the books. Israelites, this is why you shouldn't reject knowledge. Trust the Most High and His Spirit will lead you into all truth. The scripture said it was the word of God that was with Seth when Adam died. The word of God said to Seth he will be with him just like he was with his father, Adam. And when they had ended their offering, the word of God came to Seth, the eldest among them, saying unto him, O Seth, 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 three times, as I was with thy father, so also shall I be with thee until the fulfillment of the promise I made him thy father, saying, I will send my word and save thee and thy seed. But as to thy father Adam, Keep thou the commandment he gave thee, and sever thy seed from that of Cain thy brother. Today, the truth of the Most High's words reveal the holy angel Michael standing with all of our fathers. King David saw him when the angel of the Lord stood between the heavens and the earth. Abraham saw the word of God when he appeared as the lamb that was stuck in the bush. Levi, the son of Jacob, interacted with him in the spirit realm, as well as Judah, whom the angel of the Lord revealed a lot of information to him. When King Nebuchadnezzar put Daniel and his friends in the furnace of fire, the scriptures revealed there was a fourth person in the fire, one that had an appearance like the Son of God. The only character in the scriptures that is known to us as the Son of God is the Messiah. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. The person that was in the fire with Daniel and his friends was the son of God, according to King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar knew the fourth person in the fire was the son of God, the most high the father sent to deliver Daniel and his friends. King Nebuchadnezzar went on to differentiate the most high the father from the son of God. King Nebuchadnezzar said the most high helped his servants to not yield nor serve other gods except their own. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel, and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word, and yielded their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. As you can see, Israelites, the Most High sent the Son of God to deliver Daniel. Just like the Most High sent the angel of the Lord to deliver his people from Mizraim. When you unmask the characters with truth, you will begin to see the word of the Most High come alive before your very eyes. Daniel himself said the Most High, the Father, sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth so that they won't hurt him. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Israelites, the Most High doesn't change. He doesn't need to come in the flesh to save us. He will send the Son of God, the angel of the Lord, the great prince, to save us from our final captivity. All of us are waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God to deliver us in the last days. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject of vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. The Most High, the Father, have to issue the command for the chief commander, the holy angel Michael, to gather the sons of God to battle against the fallen princes of this world and to destroy the kings of the earth in the day of the Lord. The Messiah and the Father are one, but know that the Messiah is a created being just like you and me. There's only one God, and he is the Holy One of Israel. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior, 
I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. The Most High, the Father, will deliver us to his angels. Israelites, our fathers, before the word became flesh, knew the Messiah as an angel because Michael did not become flesh until the appointed time. Throughout the generations, the Messiah appeared to our fathers and helped our fathers. The word of God, which is another title for the Messiah, became flesh to fulfill everything that was written about him. The generation he was born into knew him as Yahshua, to some, Jesus. When he became flesh, he was still Michael. He still had his divine angelic nature. That is how he was able to do miracles. He obtained a body like ours to become the son of man, to fulfill the covenant the Most High made with Adam. But it made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. After his mission on earth was complete, Yahshua returned to his former glory as the holy angel Michael. The generation that will be alive when the deliverance to our people and all the righteous come, this will happen at the end of the tribulation. This generation and all the righteous that will rise will know the Messiah as the warrior angel that he is, the great prince. The scripture said the great prince will stand up for us. And at that time, Shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people? And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. We will see the Messiah as the warrior angel that he is when he comes to cut down the kings of the earth. The book of Daniel said the little horn will fight against the prince of the princes. All of us who have known him to be our prince, we will see him and know him as the Messiah, the prince. And through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Know therefore, and understand, that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the prince, shall be seven weeks, and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times, as you can see, I didn't make up the title, the Messiah, the Prince. The title is in the scriptures. The righteous who will inherit the kingdom and dwell in paradise, they will know the Messiah as the Lamb of the Most High at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Israelites, the time has come for you to get to know the Most High, the Father, and the Messiah, the Prince. Religion have taught you about the false Messiah and the God of this world. You don't want to wait until it's too late to find out the truth that the Most High is revealing to you is correct. By then it will be too late, and the Lamb of the Most High will say, Depart from me, I never knew you. Make sure your name is written in the correct Lamb's Book of Life. As we continue to unmask the Messiah in the scriptures with the truth, many Israelites will be delivered from the great sin of idolatry. Israelites, return to the Most High, the Father. That is the only way you can serve the Father in the spirit and in truth. You're not going to find the Most High in religion nor in the doctrines of Rome. Remember, it's through knowledge will the just be delivered. Israelites, let the truth of the Most High's words set you free. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory, and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. 
his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. <laughs>